Hello, I am Marcia Cambridge Maxwell, and I invite you to stay with me a few moments as we discuss cancer. Cancer occurs when a normal cell becomes damaged. Instead of repairing itself or being discarded, those abnormal cells then multiply and grow into what is called a tumor. If left untreated or undetected, that tumor can invade surrounding tissues and spread. Now this can happen anywhere in the human body. Cancer can occur on the skin, in the brain, in the head and neck, in the chest or the abdomen, even the reproductive organs. Anywhere on the human body can be a site for cancer. Though this is true, some sites are more common than others. In Guyana, according to a study, the most common cancers are cancer of the breast, cancer of the cervix, which is the mouth of the womb, and cancer of the prostate, which is a gland found in men. Regardless of which cancer we're dealing with, there are four stages. Some persons even talk about a stage zero, which is a precancerous stage, depending on the type of cancer you're dealing with. But generally speaking, stage one is very early, and stage four is after the cancer has spread to organs outside of where it has started. All cancers have risk factors, which are as follows. Radiation exposure, being exposed to certain viruses, um, having a strong family history for the cancer. But it's interesting to note that some risk factors such as smoking, alcohol intake, eating unhealthy foods, and being obese can be modified. We call these modifiable risk factors, meaning we can prevent them. Also occupational exposure because some cancers are more common in persons of a particular occupation. October is the month of breast cancer awareness. So let us spend a few minutes talking about breast cancer. In addition to the risk we just described, risk factors for breast cancer include early age of menstruation and late age of menopause. Also the use of oral contraceptive pills. A family history of breast cancer is a strong predictor of a, of a personal history of breast cancer. It is also interesting to note that breast cancer is one of the cancers most associated with alcohol use. Even though these are risk factors for breast cancer, please be aware that two-thirds, more than 60% of breast cancer cases are found in persons with no risk factors. That is why it is important to examine ourselves and know the signs and symptoms of breast cancer. These include constant pain in the breast, changes in the nipples such as inverted nipples, a rash or discoloration over the skin of the breast, any change in the size, the shape or the contour, meaning the skin overlying the breast, a lump or a swelling or any thickening in the breast, and a discharge from the nipple. Those are signs that we need to get help from a doctor. Breast cancer screening is something that varies based on age, personal risk factors, um, like family history, for example, if you've had a first degree relative with breast cancer, you're advised to start your screening about five to 10 years before the age at which that person was diagnosed, and it varies on the different situations. However, it is important to know the three facets of breast cancer screening are self-examination, examination routinely by your medical professional, and getting a mammogram, or a breast ultrasound regularly. The most important of these is the self-examination. This should be performed every month around the same time because during a person's menstrual cycle, the breast tissue can change and the ducts can become inflamed and swollen and produce different discharges and there are different changes that happen during the month. So examine your breast around the same time every month. I know I just spoke about menstrual cycle, but please be aware that men need to examine their breasts just as often as women because 1% of all breast cancer cases are actually found in men. Now for our self-examination, we first look at the breasts in different positions with our hands to the sides, with our hands um, down, and with our hands up in the air as well. We're looking for any change in shape, any any change of the skin like discoloration or a rash you're also trying to appreciate the normal contour of your breast it is normal for one breast to be larger than the other but 
Once you know what is normal for you, then the slightest change you will be aware of. Also examine the breast in the lying position with your hands over your head and also in the shower. It's good to examine the breast in the shower when our hands are soapy and we can, it can slide over the skin and therefore pick up the smallest and most discreet lumps. So that is a good time for examination. Whenever you examine your breast, make sure you're using the same position and the same technique consistently so that you don't miss any changes. You can examine in a circular motion from outside going in towards the nipple or you can start at the nipple and work your way to the outside. You can also go um, in a circular motion or you can go straight out and come back in or you can go from top to bottom. Whatever technique you use, be consistent so that you will be sensitive to the smallest of changes. When you examine your breast, also examine deep into the armpits for any swellings and also along the collarbone for any swellings. That can be the sign of an inflamed lymph node and in many cases there can be an enlarged lymph node in the armpit or by the collarbone without us feeling a lump in the breast. So be careful to include those areas in your self-examination. Remember, it is important to examine your breast. It is important to know the early signs and symptoms and it's important to know your risk factor for breast cancer. There are many treatments available and the best remedy is to detect it early. Early detection can actually save your life.